In this Elden Ring video, I'm going to be showing you my Tower Knight build, which is a build I specifically designed to be able to tackle Shadow of the Erd Tree content in June. So if you've been wondering, like, what's a good build that I can take into Shadow of Erd Tree, you might want to watch on for some helpful tips. So the general concept for this build was inspired by a recent Hammers video and some of the things that I learned while putting together that video. But essentially, the gist of it is we're going to be using a hammer and the Cragblade Ash of War in order to be able to get stance breaks very, very easily on enemies. Now, the idea of this build is that you're going to use a hammer, and I used the Morning Star for this build, and I'll get into why I picked that weapon specifically in just a second. But hammers have 36 stance damage on their charged heavy attack, and they have 36 stance damage on their block counters. So why is 36 stance damage important? I'll tell you why it's important. A lot of bosses in Elden Ring have 80 stance. That means if you do 80 stance damage to them in a short period of time, they're going to stance break, and that's going to allow you to go in for a critical attack or hit them a couple times or, you know, a combination of both, getting in some free damage. And also, when they're stance broken, they're not hitting you, which is very important when you're fighting tough bosses. Some bosses have more than 80 stance. Some have 110 stance. Some have 120 stance. Some have 105 stance. It varies a little bit from boss to boss, but a lot of bosses have exactly 80 stance. And to my knowledge, none of them have less than this in the game which means that you want to try and be able to do at least 40 stance damage if you're going for a stance break build with whatever you're doing in order to try and stance break the vast majority of bosses in two hits with whatever causes that much stance damage or three hits on the harder bosses that have more stance. And you might be thinking, well, that's great, but 36 times two is 72 stance damage. That's not 80. Well, this is where Cragblade comes in. Cragblade is going to increase the amount of stance damage that your weapon does besides adding extra damage to the weapon so that when you do your charged heavy attack with your hammer or you do a block counter with your hammer, you're going to do 40 stance damage, allowing you to stance break most bosses in two hits. And I also want to point out here that it's very important that the block counter also does 40 stance damage because this allows you to do a charged R2 or a charged heavy attack, block and then do a block counter and stance break an enemy that quickly. If you have a weapon that has high stance damage on the charged heavy, but also doesn't have it on the block counter, then when you go to block counter, you're not going to stance break them and you'll still have to strike them another time. Hammers don't have this problem and because they're such light weapons, they're easier to build around. If you have a very heavy weapon like a great hammer or a colossal hammer or a colossal sword or a colossal axe or something like that or a great axe or something and you're trying to use a great shield to do block counters, you're going to have a lot of weight on your character and it's very hard to build that early on in the game. But by having a weapon that is very light, like the Morning Star that only weighs five, you're able to use that great shield and that and still not have to worry as much about your equipment weight. So the general strategy then is that you're gonna buff with Crag Blade as you move around the landscape to boost your damage. You don't really need to worry too much about stance damage on the landscape because you'll be have enough with block counters and charged heavy attacks to do just fine without that buff, but the extra damage will be nice for you. And Crag Blade buffs physical damage. So we've gone with the heavy infusion here in order to make sure all of our damage on the Morning Star is heavy. And so when you go into a boss fight, particularly, you're going to make sure you want to buff with Crag Blade so that you get to that 40 mark. And then you're going to go do like a charged heavy attack very quickly, as quick as you can. And then, you know, use a block counter to stance break them. And if you can't block counter them because they're like a big enemy or whatever, then you're going to try and just use charged heavy attacks to knock them down and then maybe attack them a few times before getting a critical hit. So the reason that I chose the Morning Star for this build is because it has native bleed buildup on hit. Now you don't have to choose the Morning Star. You can do this with any hammer in the game. The principles of it are fundamentally the same, so that doesn't matter. But the reason I chose it is for that bleed buildup. This bleed buildup does not trigger on regular enemies on the landscape hardly ever. However, particularly if you're playing this build from the very beginning of the game when you don't have like a fully upgraded weapon, bleed is gonna pay, play more of a role because you're gonna have to hit enemies more times before they die particularly bosses, which means that you're more likely to trigger blood loss. And that blood loss can really help you get through a boss more quickly, even if you only trigger it one time. It doesn't change the fundamental way we play this build, but it sort of augments it by giving you periodic hemorrhage triggers on some bosses. And that's just good to have. The, the two things you want going into the Elden Ring DLC are status effects and stance damage, and this build has both. So if you're playing this build from the very beginning of the game, you're going to want to get a hammer quickly. There are a lot of early game hammers. Uh, Morning Star can be gotten in Weeping Peninsula, so you can go get that right away. The next thing you're going to want to get is a great shield. I'm using the Manor Tower Shield for this build, which is kind of the namesake of the build. You can get this in Stormvale Castle, which isn't too far. You don't actually have to defeat any bosses besides Margit to get this shield. 
So once you've defeated him, you can just run through the castle and go pick it up without having to fight anything else, really, if you don't want. And what I really like about this great shield, it has very good guard boost for how early you can get it into the game, which allows you to do block counters very effectively because great shields have extra hardness compared to medium shields, which means a lot of enemies rebuff off their attacks, giving you a better opening for block counters, just making them more easy for you to do. It does weigh a considerable amount, however, at 16 and it needs 30 strength, which is one of the reasons that I think hammers are really good in this game is that they weigh so little on average, it allows you to use a great shield with them and still get those block counters and that stance damage that you would get from a much heavier weapon and still be able to use a great shield easily. And obviously the Ash of War Cragblade is actually found in Kaled and it's a ways into Kaled. It's actually close to Redmain Castle, but you don't actually have to fight anything to go get it. There's a teardrop scarab over there that you just need to kill which, you know, doesn't even attack you, so you just run up to it when you find it, kill it, get this Ash of War, and then you have it. It's just a long ride, really, to go get it. So it doesn't take you very long to put this build together. The Knight set is located in Round Table Hold. You can buy it there once you have the runes. So the fundamentals of this build can come together very, very quickly. And the talismans that I'm using for this build, most of them can be found quite early on. I have the Greed and Turtle Talisman for Stamina Recovery. That way you can block and attack without having to worry too much about your stamina. Otherwise, you might have stamina issues. We have the Axe Talisman here that further increases your charged heavy attack damage. We do a lot of those in this game, so that's a good damage increase there. We have the Curved Sword Talisman, which increases your block counter damage. All of these talismans can be found very, very early on in the game. And what's great, too, is if you defeat Margit and go in and get that Tower Shield, when you defeat him, you're going to gain another Talisman slot. So you'll have two Talisman slots when you put this build together and from the very beginning of the game, which will be good. So the Great Shield Talisman is in my last slot, and this further increases the guard boost of your shield, making it so that you lose less stamina when you block. And we really don't have to have this for this build. It just kind of makes it so that really whenever you block, you don't have any trouble with stamina. You, you won't really anyway with this shield, but... This just puts it even further into that category where you can block and attack and block and counter. And you never really run out of stamina with this build, which is quite nice. If you want, you could replace this with something like Ritual Sword Talisman to further increase your damage since you don't tend to get hit very often with this build because you are blocking and block countering so much. But sometimes you do trade in boss fights because you have to play aggressively to get stance breaks. So I find that during boss fights, you know, something like this is better or maybe even the Dragon Crest Great Shield Talisman to further increase your protection. When it comes to attributes for this build, we have 50 Vigor, 25 Mind, 30 Endurance. We're all the way up at 80 Strength. We have 12 Dexterity, and basically you don't need any Intelligence, Faith, or Arcane for this build. Maybe at some point in Journey 2 or Journey 3 you might add some. But the idea here is that you have enough health that you can trade hits and be aggressive in boss fights. You will take some damage in boss fights just because of the nature of this build. So you need enough health to survive that. Mind is not super important for this build. You can get away with less mind than 25. You could probably drop this down to 20. I typically set it at this when I'm testing builds. But the reason for that is all that you're doing is buffing with Cragblade, which isn't super expensive. And frankly, you don't need it all the time. You probably only need it for the harder enemies. So you, you don't really tend to go through a lot of FP flasks with this build, and you can skew your flasks more heavily to the HP side of things generally. Endurance is up at 30 because you want a lot of stamina in order to be able to block and attack, block and block counter. You also need to wear at least a 51 poise armor set, which the knight set is, in order to be able to, you know, medium roll and not fat roll around all over the place. You are also carrying a great shield, so that adds a lot of weight to this build. So endurance is good here because of the stamina it provides you and the equip weight. You need both of those things for this build. I have strength all the way up at 80 here to increase the amount of damage you do with our melee attacks. We're not two-handing here. We are one-handing, so 80 can benefit you. Um, dexterity is at 12 because of my class. I don't think the Morning Star needs that much dexterity. You could actually have lower. But your dexterity will probably depend on what class you begin with and also like what hammer you decide to use because some of them can use more or less dexterity. And then a couple other tips before I wrap up this build. Exalted Flesh is really good for this build. If, or you can use Flame Grant Me Strength if you want to dip a few points into Faith in order to be able to cast that because you do 100% physical damage with this build. Keep in mind, too, that if you don't buff with Cragblade, like if you don't need stance damage in a boss fight or when facing an enemy type, you can buff your hammer with like other greases as well, or you could put Blood Flame Blade on it if you do decide to dip a couple points into Faith and have like a point or two in Arcane. You could do that, but a Cragblade will override weapon buffs. However, it doesn't override Exalted Flesh or Flame Grant Me Strength, so those are both good to have. 
For the Flask of Wonders Physique, you can go a couple ways. You can use the one that increases your charged attack damage. That's great. You're going to be using that strategy on bosses, so that's definitely a plus. You can go for extra stamina or stamina recovery. And you can also go for extra poise damage if you want to try and, like, break bosses that have more than 80 stance faster. And then when it comes to Great Runes for this build, I think Redon's is easily the best choice here just because it gives you stamina, FP, and HP. You don't really need FP for this build, but stamina and HP are both really good to have for this build. Godric's is not bad, but you really only need four stats for this build, so it's probably wasted compared to something like Redon's. And then lastly, again, you can use any hammer you want for this build. I just like the Morningstar for the occasional hemorrhage trigger on bosses, particularly if you're playing this game or playing this build from the very beginning of the game. That will happen more regularly. But you don't have to use that hammer. You can use any one that you prefer. So that wraps up our Tower Knight build. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. This is a very simple, straightforward build that's extremely effective. I know that, you know, we made the Noble Swordsman build recently that has fantastic stance breaks. And that also is a build I would highly recommend for Shadow of the Erd Tree. But this build has a lot more protection than that build because you can just walk up to stuff, block counter really easily with a great shield, and I really, really like it. Stay tuned for more Elden Ring content as we continue the hype train toward Shadow of the Erd Tree. We are going to have more build guides. We're going to finish up our weapon guides. Working on some Ash of War guides. We also have some ranking lists coming, I believe. Thanks for those of you who are curious what I find to be the best of the best in Elden Ring.